it's up at noon. Is that new Metal Gear happy to see us, or is it happy to see us? Seriously, look at that. Do you have an amiibo problem? Because Brian does. We're gonna I have do. an intervention. You wanna do the last one? Yeah, I'll do the last one. Let's get some bread wet. Let's get that baguette all soaked. Throw some toast in the toilet. Let's just get that real bread all gross. We're gonna be getting some bread wet. That's baguette. right. This baguette. is a, a, a real show. Live. Man, I gotta say, if if you are at home and you are ranking the intros we've done for the show, that is a hard number three. Yeah, this is the third episode of Up at Noon Live. We're still figuring out some stuff and how it works. I'm Max Scovo. This is Brian Altano. What's up, Max? Um, thank you for for sitting down in this this cold room. The studio here is very cold. Mm -hmm. it's, it's freezing. It's you know why they fact. do? I don't know why they do that. I think because TVs like to be uh, very chilly. It mm -hmm. make, makes the image better and the crispier and stronger. It's a yeah. nice thing to do. Uh, so let's get into the show. First, I want to thank Five Hour Energy for sponsoring our fine show, putting mm -hmm. a little spring in our step and a little bear on our desk. That guy. I like the bear. Anyway, um, let's get into this. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five comes out on Tuesday. Yeah. I'm going to play that game because it looks like it has everything I've ever wanted in a game. Um, it's got something I didn't know I ever wanted in a game. The, I think the robot has a little, little wiener. So let's let's get into that real quick. Yeah, uh, there it is. We actually um, don't know what we're allowed to call this. So this is, if you're worried about spoilers, this was in Kojima's trailer he released. This is the launch trailer. So yeah. that's the new Metal Gear. It kind of looks like Rex until you get a good look at. Look at that. That is that his donk? Uh huh. His Dak? Um, Schwindel? What's going on there? Look at that. He's, he's like sw swinging ooh, it around. He's putting now, that wand out there. We say as Kojima obsessed with this, I want to point out this is a Yoji Shinko, a design robot. Yep. He's done all the Metal Gears. Uh, look at it. It's like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> how's it going? What's up in here? Really uh, noticeable. And I'm just like, this is completely ridiculous. This is totally uncalled for and, mm -hmm. and absurd. And then I realized that um, here we've got the Basilisk from Metal Gear Peace Walker and right. Jehudi from, uh, from Zone of the Enders. Both of which have little thingamajigs going hey, uh, on. Thank you for doing that, that circle thing. Yeah, I know so you, you had to import these images in Photoshop. We're, to, we're talking about crotches of robots. Yeah. And now, even beyond that, Metal Gear Rex, good old Rex, the first Metal Gear I ever encountered, mostly because you don't have to get to the end of the game to see him because mm -hmm. he's just chilling there. He's got a little thingamajig too. I always just sort of assumed that he was more of like a, like that was a head on top of two legs, but there's a crotch there, just little. So what are you thing. saying? Is this, is this sort of like, like the way Tarantino loves feet? Is Kojima's thing uh, I think Metal Donks? You know, people are always like, Metal Gear, yeah, Metal Gear's like, there's a lot of serious stuff. It's about how war changes and how love <laughs> can bloom on the battlefield. But then it's also like, you're a man who gets in a box and you can go inside a locker and look at bikini pictures yep. and you can tie balloons to animals. You can shoot this thing in the deck. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't know. I think it's just one of those things where it's sort of like, this is how love, love blooms on the battlefield, though. You yeah, need, love, you need that. Do you believe love is going to be blooming all over the battlefield? Uh, so we touched on this briefly for a second. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain, yep. you can use the Fulton recovery system, which Metal Gear fans are familiar with from, from Peace Walker. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone else probably familiar with it from uh, from The Dark Knight. That's the time that Batman ties a balloon to a guy and he just gets sucked out a window and then a plane picks him up. Mm -hmm. That's the, kind of like the main mechanic in Metal Gear, aside from crawling and shooting stuff and getting in a box. Uh, we want to try, we want to try something. We want to try to actually Fulton some things in real life using real balloons. That we bought from Safeway, which is a uh, supermarket here in San Francisco. Real pain in the ass, by the way. Um, if you ever want balloons, don't. It took Max don't and want I- I want balloons. No, it took, it took Max and I one full hour this morning. They were to, having a busy day with other people. Nobody else is buying balloons but hey, us. Hey, we bought nonsense balloons. Uh, what if, what if anyway, our son was sick? Let's get into this. Um, I want to throw it social. Uh, we are going to, we want, you to we want to know what do you guys want to do? What's the craziest thing you want to do in Metal Gear? Let us know on Twitter. Use the hashtag up at noon, and we're going to go to do, the, do the balloon thing. Let's go, let's go do let's the go balloons. Okay, let's go. go. In Metal Gear Solid V, you can do a thing called Fulton. That means taking things and connecting them to balloons and watching them float away. Here's how it works in the game. And here we are. Look at all these great balloons we got. All of these different balloons. That's right. Uh, clearly, uh, these are military grade. Yep. Uh, just wish. Good, like we, this is our favorite. It has a monkey on it. it. Says, "Get well soon, okay." And then there's uh 
It's actually Kojima's birthday. I believe that's when, uh, I think that's when Metal Gear, when, when it launches. <laughs> I was uh, uh, I was walking down the San Francisco holding some balloons. I was sending a very weird message to you people. You looked like you were about to go kill somebody. I did. I looked like a mob boss. Yeah. So it really looks like I have a, uh, a new baby daughter who's leaving me because she's sick and it's her birthday. Yeah. Okay, so, so we have, a, you have various toys yeah. of the trade. What do we have Let's here? Let's start off nice and easy. Here is something we know you can Fulton in, get up in, in Metal Gear Solid 5. Here is... A little sheep, a little animal cracker of a sheep. We're gonna. This is totally gonna. This is totally gonna work. Uh huh. Are we ready? Let's get it. I'm gonna send this back to Mother Base. Ready? Will it fold in? Yes. It, sure it does. did. It did. Don't it fold in. Fell on the floor. Don't eat the floor sheep. So a uh, a cookie sheep will fold in. Uh, you can probably do that in the game too. Uh, what's up next? Who do we have? Here we got some. We got some magical growing creatures. You guys might remember these from how they're sort of fun to do if you're a kid. Uh, what's a good one? Let's do a... Can we get that gorilla with his taint? Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, we can do out. that. Here, take a look at this uh, suggestive suggestive primate right here. Mm -hmm. Really, he's having a great time. This is like... Uh, we're gonna hook him on right here. I this feel like very, this in very Inception, like this would be your totem. Now, these are the Nobody kind of... Nobody touch my uh, growing gorilla. These are the kind of animals, if you get them wet, you leave them in water for a couple hours, they get huge. We didn't have time for that. So, this gorilla might not be able to fault in later, but right now... He can! Works he fault in! Uh, I'm also, I gotta let you know, I'm terrified there's hot studio lights in here, and if these blow up, we will send uh, sprinklers all over IGN, all of our consoles will be soaked, all of our video game controllers and computers will explode, and uh, Max and I will be fired. Let's say so. the boys back at Mother Base are hungry for a fun snack. We got some official Skylanders fruit flavored snacks. Are we gonna do the whole box? Not fruit snacks. No, we're not gonna do the whole box. Are we gonna do a package? Those boys haven't been that good, they don't deserve that much of a treat, but we're gonna stab this right through and see, is it gonna fault in? What do you think? Let, Let us it, know. Let's, let's put it down. Let's we gotta do it from the ground. Oh, it doesn't fault in the <laughs> Skylanders. Are they sky or landers? Well, I guess it sort of floats. They are landers. It's 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 barely fultoning. Okay. Not very well. I'm gonna eat these later. Okay. Now that's that's nice and all. Max, you have a you have a spirit animal yeah. uh, called the raccoon. Uh, uh, they're basically little garbage bears. Yeah. Now we're gonna hook him on right here. I'm actually gonna lasso right around his little head. Let's find out. Will the raccoon fold him? We're bringing him down. I'm gonna bring him back up. Come on, baby. Get well soon. It's a girl. Yes! Yeah! Oh, he's going away. He's We're getting garbage <laughs> bears at Mother Base. He's disappearing. Somebody's finally gonna eat all that trash. Get well soon, raccoon. I would. I would be. I would basically just stroke out and lose my mind if there's a mission in Metal Gear Solid 5 where you get back to base and you're bleeding out the head and you're covered in fire and you've got a horn and an eye patch and your dog's all just messed up and you, you get off the chopper and you're like, I'm Snake, I'm the, I'm the boss, I'm a demon inside and Revolver Ocelot comes up and he's like, boss, listen, we got raccoons on Mother Base. And then you just have to run around Mother Base because there's raccoons eating all the trash. That's a, that's a varmint problem. Yeah. Up next we have titular hero of Mario Kart, Mario Kart. Here he is. Will he fault in? I feel really bad. I have to keep hooking these guys around their necks. It's it's basically a noose. All right, they, we're gonna bring it actually, down. Wait, they tie balloons to their cars in that game too. Don't That's they? right. Lakitu gets them out of the out of the water. Yeah. So it's like Mario. This is, works on so many. No, levels. not very well. Mario, you you want to stay in the drink? It's not working for you. Mario Kart does not fault in. That's a big problem. Okay. Next up, we got someone who's real appropriate. Here is the GI Joe known as Snake Eyes. Mm -hmm. It's not quite Snake, but you know he's. A, Reagan era ninja, so that works. He's got a little hook here. This is perfect for him. Uh, now, G.I. Joe's, when I was a kid, I used to do this all the time. I would take little parachutes yeah. and balloons. So let's find out. Will Snake from G.I. Joe Fulton. Yes! Wow, look at him. He's looking great. You know this why that is? It's because he used to be a helicopter pilot before his vocal cords were damaged. It's a tactical espionage a mission crash. right here. Watch this. That is awesome. Hell yeah. Okay, he's good. All right. Uh, what do we got next? Let's, uh... Let's send up. Uh, let's send up snakes. Uh, Snake Eyes' little buddy. This is this is Timber the wolf. Now there are are there wolves in this game, Max? Uh, you get a you get a husky dog, I believe. Okay. Do you think you can fault in him? Uh, uh, I don't. I think so. I think that's how you get him in the first place. Well, here's this... here's an advanced screening. Do you think this wolf will fault in? Yes. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this floating wolf. This is awesome. <laughs> That's gonna look weird in a GIF after the fact. Here we go. Uh, what do we got? We have a Fultoning Wolf. Now here we got one. This is this is a this is a real challenge. We've got Snake Plissken himself, the original John Carpenter character played by Kurt Russell. This dude's real heavy. This isn't gonna work heavy. at all. Kurt Russell is actually pretty heavy in real life too right now. So this is gonna be 
Give me an interesting uh, scenario here. Will it Fulton, Mr. Russell, are you putting on his butt? Putting oh, his butt? weird. What? There's a packet of silica gel in his coat. <laughs> I haven't played with this toy enough. I'm, he's, got, he's going down hard. This is going to be real This is an expensive Ready? collectible. Ready? All right, so that didn't work. Not even close. He didn't es escape from... Oh, that, yeah. was, that was sad. Do we okay, got, we got anything else? One last guy. We've got Boba Fett. Max, he's probably your favorite Star Wars character. He's gotten out of the Sarlacc pit if you've read the uh, Expanded Universe novels, which are apparently no longer okay, canon. Let's give him the, super, the Superman arms. Oh, you want to fly him? Yeah, let's see if he can fly. This, yeah. is, this is good. This is, as you can see, this is the original old school Boba Fett. Not the Muscle Man one from the 90s or That's one right. of the many ones they did before then. We're working with relics today. Will it Fulton, Boba Fett! Yeah! Yes! <laughs> All right. We've done it. Okay, cool. Now we're going to go blow up some balloons with studio lights and it's going to start a real fire in here. It's going to get real disgusting. Man, what do we do at work? All right. Yeah. Stupid stuff. Thanks for watching Will It Fulton, Metal Gear Solid in stores next week. There we are. Hi, kids. How's it going? What a transition that uh, was. So before we uh, before we started the show, we were actually supposed to talk about some breaking news, some that's big right. stuff that's happening. We got our first look at Michael Fassbender in his role in the Assassin's Creed movie. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I have it on the thing. Pull it. Mike, thanks. Uh, as you can see, Yahoo got the got the jump on this. Yeah. Um, no, that's actually part of his, his costume. He's got to carry that sign with him. Everywhere. This is the new character, Yahoo. Uh, <laughs> What is it? He's, what's, what character is he playing? Uh, we didn't actually read this because it happened right before we went live and we were running out of the hair. He's playing, no, he's playing Callum Ed Lynch. He isn't That's playing Desmond Car Miles, that, Ezio, or yeah, he's Callum, guy. Callum Lynch. That's right. Um, yeah. That's cool. So, I don't know if you guys have seen this. Um, the guy who's directing this, mm -hmm. um, Justin Kurzel, he's doing, uh, I think it's Macbeth. There's a trailer for that out right now. This movie might look completely mind blowingly incredible. Look up that Macbeth trailer because it's gorgeous. So my issue with this costume is that, uh, if you want to pull it back up, now playing these games, this character always looks ridiculous. He's the only person in the town that looks like this. No one else dresses like this except for the other assassins. So it's pretty obvious to find him. In a movie, like he really sticks out like a sword. Well, thumb. what if it's like a Daredevil thing, like the Netflix show where it's going to start out and he's going to be doing some kind of just basic robe with like a regular knife. That's actually really unsettling. Okay. Our balloons are floating around over to the <laughs> left of us there. Um, is that Boba Fett? Is he still faulting over there? Yep, still Boba Fett. It's more screen, wow. That's more screen time than he got in the trilogy. That's right. Boba <laughs> Fett is fultoning around the studio as we speak. So uh, yeah, what else we got? We also, speaking of Star Wars, we did get, uh, we can't really show it here because of rules. Uh, the Star Wars Instagram account, which I don't know if they, I don't think I was following them. I didn't know if they were doing anything. They yeah. just put up a big old chunk of what looks like the next trailer we're going to see for The Force Awakens. I know some of you are sick of hearing about Star Wars. I'm honestly, at this point, I kind of want to cut myself off and not watch anything more because I want to be surprised when this comes out in theaters. But Basically impossible to I do at this job. I work here, so yeah. we're kind of going to have to be paying Basically attention to Basically impossible to do. Uh, we do definitely see some new footage, so yep. you know, if you're one of those people who's wary of looking at stuff that might spoil things. You and I were talking about this the other day. So there's a, there's a new shot of, of uh, uh, BB-8 in okay, here. Okay, well, we're going to spoil things. There you go. Well, okay, this, oh, is, BB this is a shot of BB-8. Okay, so, no, okay. Here's a question for you guys watching at home. When you saw BB-8, the little, little ball droid, did you think that... He was real little, or like the size of a volleyball, or did you think he was like kind of on scale with R2-D2, like maybe a little bit bigger? Because right. I, I thought from day one that he was about the same size as an astromech droid. See, because when you and I built that BB-8, who's about this tall, I really thought that was his size. I thought it was like this. I thought it'd be like a little volleyball friend that you could kick around the, the Millennium Falcon, and he would just flip over and land on his head every single time. Uh, but he's, he's really up to, your, up to your knees or your waist. He's actually a pretty tall, uh, he's a pretty tall robot. So that kind of worries me. I thought he'd be cuter than that. I think that when things get too big, they're ugly. Max? I hate, I hate you. <laughs> you're, you're a bad friend. Uh, on that note, do we have anything else to talk about? There was the, the, uh, the little, uh, little amiibo. Do you want to talk about that later? Want to just wanna hit at it now? Yeah, we'll get into that later. There's a little okay. bit more later. But yeah, uh, you know, the Star Wars stuff, let us know what you think about it. Uh, use the hashtag up at noon. We talked about this last week. I'm kind of over spoilers. I don't want to see anything more about this. But apparently there are people uh, out there who are still not sold on this movie. There are those people are the, ones, are the ones who uh, write wiki articles. And they have, they have like placeholders right now. We actually, it's weird. We have one. Uh, we have a Star Wars wiki on IGN. Uh, that, there's a, a photo that they put out of... Uh, I believe it's Ray, and she's with BB-8. BB-8's in a net, and there's this thing that looks like a cross between like an Adat and a Dubac. It's mm -hmm. like this weird farm animal thing, and there's some sort of little critter riding on it. We have a wiki page for the name of that animal, which the name escapes me. It's like a, a, a worker beast or something. Yep. 
We don't have any information. They're just like, here's what it, it's. Do you think it's, it's got a, some legs? Do you think it's a real monster? Uh, a real or, monster, or just no, a, not an a real monster? <laughs> yeah, like that dude that always had to remember that Star Wars creature. Remember that guy that always had to hold his eyeballs? Yeah, the crumb. Yeah, and then sometimes he would like he would go to the, to the uh, toilet and he'd be like, oh, I lost my eyes in the toilet. Again. All right, so let's move on. Um, Fallout Four. That's right. That's the hot new jam. We're all really excited about that. We got some new concept art. I, one of the things that's going really well for that game is that it's coming out in November, and we don't really know a whole lot about it because it got announced this year, which is so nice. That's so exciting. Uh, concept art's great because it doesn't really show you what's going to be happening in the game. Here is what looks like a bridge, a wet bridge. with a big old boat crashing right on into it. You know, actually, I used to live in, in Cambridge in Boston when I was a kid. I think really? I... I think I know that bridge. Did you uh, have to watch out for pterodactyl poop? Because that is what is all over this bridge. There is giant, giant oh, bird God. feces. What if there are huge Do you see all that? It looks like a bird ate a bunch of coins and uh, some soap and just pooped all What's over What's wrong this. with you? Look at that. Am I making this no, no, up, this, this looks like that video you showed me of when they fed Alka-Seltzers to seagulls, <laughs> and then they're just going around and pooping on everybody at Venice Beach. That was an awful video, by the way. That uh, guy looks... Up, do you see that? Hold on. Can you go back real quick? I just want to point out the guy on the top of the bridge. In the, in the top left over there, he's walking across the bridge, and he's probably like, there's damn poop all over this bridge. And there's ducks down there, and seagulls, so they're babies. Is, yeah, it's they're seagulls, pooping. Yeah. They are pooping all over this bridge. What Make do you think way that is? for ducklings. Mm-hmm. All right. Here's this, some some synthetic people. Yeah. This, this is going to be a big thing. We kind of knew this from day one and rumors and all that. Uh, MIT is the institute in Fallout. Here we get a look at, unlike the robots in Metal Gear, there's no wieners abound here. This is a... This looks like a weight loss ad. Yeah. <laughs> you want to cut carbs? Well, what about... What if <laughs> you, what what if you cut everything but the circulatory <laughs> system? Like, I want to see Anakin Skywalker toying with the dude on the far right over there because it looks like C-3PO in the prequels. Yeah, I can He's see a that. Gen 2 synth. Which All is right. pretty awesome. That and here's another like a Skrillex look at album. the synths. This looks like a Skrillex album cover. This looks, <laughs> this looks like a like a really cool album cover. I'm yeah. into this. This looks like yeah. if if uh, someone did if there was like a Skrillex uh, remix of that Coldplay album. Yeah. Was it Human Clay? Or, no, yep. it's Creed. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? A Cold Rush of Blood to the Head or whatever. I worked at a record store. I don't listen to Coldplay. I just want to it, yeah. That. No, this looks like if uh, Paul Oakenfold did a remix for iRobot. Yeah, that'd be maybe good. I don't know. Then of course we get Brotherhood of Steel. So this is clearly like this is kind of CG pre-render stuff. I'm usually kind of a stickler for uh, just concept art. Like I yeah. like I like painterly, sketchy concept art. I'm not crazy about it when it involves CG, because but obviously that's kind of part of the development process. This is totally selling me. I love this, because this actually reminds me of the sort of Battlestar Galactica robot thing mm -hmm. that they've been kind of borrowing from for a while on these designs. Mm -hmm. And this is straight up like that. I, li I really actually like the me metallic look of this. Like I would yep. actually, I would buy this 12 inch figure from my desk. We actually have two, uh, we have two of these guys in our office, the old ones from Fallout 3, and you, when you walk into your break room, or our break room here, they're just standing there. And when you're working late at night, it's uh, legitimately terrifying to walk into the IGN break room to make a drink or eat a pizza by yourself. And you just see them hanging out there with their yeah. guns. It's very terrifying. Look at a lot of weird big giant statues here. It's kind of cool. So I think all, th all things considered, uh, this is sort of like, you know, Max, and you and I are like big, we're, we're you know, former art school kids. Like mm -hmm. we're really geeked out on concept art. This concept art to me looks actually a lot better than the stuff in the game. And I know it's like, that yeah. means I'm, I'm not like pooping on the game or we anything kind of like hit that. on that. They were like saying how they're like, yeah, we know that maybe the graphics aren't totally mind blowing. That's yeah. not really our focus here. Yeah. And I'm totally cool with that. I'm cool with that too. Also, I'm okay with that. If I mean if Fallout 3 and New Vegas and Skyrim are an indication, people are gonna mod those graphics to look prettier. Yeah. You know, they're, they're gonna dump it in PC and they're gonna throw in a bunch of Instagram filters and batch light rendering composite filters or whatever. Yep. Tessellators. I don't know what computers do anymore. Uh, I did at one point. Not anymore. But people are going to make it look real pretty. And when Fallout 6, 5, 5, sorry, lost count. Fallout 5 is about to come out, they're still going to be working on it because that's kind of how things go there. Uh, the Amazing Universe 17 on Twitter, that's Juwanda967. I don't know if that's uh, his, his name and area code. Says, uh, do you think a Fallout game about the Great War would be good or would it be a waste of money? I mean... I just think that would kind of I kind of like Fallout for the world that you're exploring, you know? Mm -hmm. Like we kind of there was that there was that DLC. It was I think it was the Broken Steel one for Fallout 3, which was basically it felt like Call of Duty, it felt like Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Like yeah. you're running around just shooting stuff and it was like, okay, you know, that's fun, but it's like I want to I want to talk to weird mutants and and have conversations. And, uh, potato, you know. At Trogdor underscore six, that's Potato King, says, why would you have to point out that it looked like bird poop? This is what we do. This is called video game journalism. You don't get a degree in this, okay? I think it is bird poop. It is bird poop. It's yeah. clearly There's bird birds poop. birds everywhere. 
Obviously. I mean, what else is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you thought, right? Worse than that. Worse than that. Uh, at Mike Drucker, what's up, Mike? A former writer of the show says, uh, Star Wars spoiler, you won't be a child when you see the new movie and your dreams will be dead. Mike, I love you and your positivity and optimism. <laughs> you are just the best. Awful man. Awful man. No, he's a good man. Good boy. Um, Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. So uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about, uh, speaking of Fallout and Metal Gear and all the other things, is that this fall is going to be stupid expensive. Yeah. Just really, really expensive. Um, and that worries me because I want to play a lot of video games, and I know all of you do too. There, I know there are some people that just watch the show to watch two men make fools of themselves, and we promise that will always be free. Uh, but they're just we, I pulled up an actual release date list. Um, I want to run through it real quick. This doesn't include handheld games or downloadable games or uh, plastic instruments. Or gifts old, for your family. Or gifts for your family or Amiibo or Skylanders or anything like that. So let's go through this real quick. Now, most of these, I want to say $60 each, right? Except for the Nintendo games, which are 50 So thank you, Nintendo, for holding down that for because that's amazing. So September 1st, we have Metal Gear Solid Five. Yep. yep. Mad Max. Yep. Yeah, you're into that? I mean, I'm on my way until it's on, not until I finish Metal Gear, but you know, let's, for the sake of this, you know. Yep. Mario Maker, September 11th. Mm -hmm. Big thumbs up to that one. Forza Motorsport 6. Not really my style, but that game looks amazing. Uh, it looks like they fixed the uh, audience now when you're driving around. They don't look like cardboard standees of people at a NASCAR event. So that looks good. Skylander Superchargers, September 20th. Uh, that game can ra range anywhere between $60 and $6,000, depending on how greedy your children are. Uh, FIFA 16. Children. <laughs> Children. Yep. Again, not my style, but uh, it's good for people who like the FIFA games. Lego Dimensions looks awesome. Again, That's, yeah. a portal into uh, Toys R Us where you could spend thousands of dollars. Uh, NBA 2K16 looks great. Rock Band 4 and Guitar Hero Live are happening within uh, a couple weeks of each other. One thing I noticed about this, games don't come out on the same days anymore. We have uh, October 6th, October 9th, October 16th, October 20th. They just they come out whenever they want. Interesting. Well, I, I know Nintendo's always been kind of Weird about this. Like yeah. they'll be like, "Yeah, we're putting out the new Pokemon on a Saturday, so you and your parents can go to the store and hang out and have a good time." And you know, it's everyone's got a day off, as yep. opposed to being like, "Mom, Dad, we got to go. It's it's Monday at midnight because Tuesday is the day that things come out." You know, it's Nintendo like, also does that thing where they're like, "It's summertime. Why we want you to go outside and have fun? We're not going to put out any games." And I'm like, "I want to stay home and play video games. This is when I have the most time." Yeah. Do you uh, want children to die of heat exhaustion, Nintendo? Because or get rolled over by a log in the woods? <laughs> there are numerous cars driving around out there. Uh, October 9th, we have the Uncharted Collection. That is a $60 game. Did you know that? How do you feel about that? Um, that makes sense. Yeah. HD three, remasters of... Three games. Like, those are 20 bucks. Games, 20 bucks a piece. Yeah. That's pretty fair. October 16th, Yoshi's Willy World. It's already been out in the UK and Japan and everywhere else. Uh, it's, it's got pretty positive reviews. I can't wait to play that because there's just a, it's just gorgeous. I'm, I'm really excited for that. Uh, Guitar Hero Live, October 20th. Another... If you don't have the drums or the guitars and all the instruments and all that stuff like yeah. that. And we haven't hit November yet, yeah. which is when games traditionally come out in droves. We are still in October. So right, right. If, if you're interested in even half of this stuff, October 23rd, Assassin's Creed Syndicate um, looks awesome. I'm, I'm, as always, for all these games, cautiously optimistic. I'll probably get into it. Uh, WWE 2K16, October 27th. Halo 5 Guardians, also October 27th. It's going to be a big this one. This is crazy. Did I skip over? Uh, no, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, now, Need for Speed, November 3rd. Yep. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, November 7th. Yeah, that's another big one, yep. Here's a big day. Fallout 4, November 10th. Rise of the Tomb Raider, November 10th. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, November 10th. Which of those do you think will sell the most mm. copies? Tough day, Tony Hawk. Did you see what they were doing with that, with that game, by the way? How they, every time you see it, it's got a different art style, and now it's got cell shading. Get it together. All right, well, you know. Yeah, so it's uh, fun times ahead. I, I don't. That's that's gonna be a very difficult day to pick. I a don't game. think Activision's gonna be too worried about it. You know, yeah. they've got they've if, got Black Ops Three and they've got Guitar Hero Live. So if for some reason you can beat all three of those games by the seventeenth, you can play Star Wars Battlefront. Ooh. And if three days later you're bored of that game because it has no single player, I am so excited for that game. Despite of that, uh, it had Star Fox Zero. Yeah, or if Wii U. you wish that Star Wars had more animals in it. Yep. Uh, Star Fox Zero, November twentieth. Rainbow Six Siege, December first. Just Oof. Cause 3, December 1st, which is a nice way to close the year with a ridiculous grappling hook open world video game. Yeah. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, December 4th, and Hitman, December 8th, which is a full price game even though there's like seasonal stuff going on. Right. So, the, the deal with that is it's kind of episodic, yeah, right? Yeah, it's episodic. Like you, buy, you buy the game and then you just wait for it to yep. come to you, which I kind of like. Again, this doesn't, this doesn't include any like the new Shovel Knight DLC so, or any right. indie games like The Witness or That's anything like that. That's just what we said. How yeah. much do you think that'll run? How much? How much? You, you have the answer. I have the answer. How much is? Should it? we ask Twitter? What do you think that'll run? Yeah. 
What, tell us how much money you think that is. If you're sitting home and you're doing that kind of math in your head, you should be on Jeopardy. What are you doing watching this show? You should be talking to Trebek right now. Man, all right, so what does Twitch have to say? Do you know? Do you have any idea? I'm guessing they say zero dollars because they are uh, just catching up. Star Wars, yeah. Yo Yogi57 says 200 bucks. 200 dollars, wow, where are you at? I don't know if we've actually gotten to the point where we're guessing that stuff yeah. yet, but you know, uh, yeah. Um, Pencil Paladin says, stupid date for Mad Max. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I honestly, like, right that's about the that. thing, though, is there's a whole lot of people out there who, who don't care about, uh, you know, who don't care about Metal Gear Solid 5. That's or right. They see the 5, and they're like, I didn't play any of the other ones. And they're I in. I saw Mad Max, though. That's a cool movie. I so like here's cars. your answer. Drum roll, $1,820, not including tax, which here in California is ridiculous, not including shipping in case you still do that, or, you know, putting gas in your car and going on down to GameStop and talking to those dudes. That takes time. Yeah, and that's, that's a whole couple hours of your life. American trying bucks. Trying to sell you uh, and strategy guides. A lot and of places, video games are more expensive than that. So that's if you're right. in Australia, I'm sorry. But really, like, how many of those games are you going to buy? Let us know. Uh, we actually asked that question on Twitter earlier, and we got some wonderful responses. Uh, man. SDF River says, I'm honestly hoping to spend around $560, Destiny the Taken King PS4, and TTK for the Xbox One. Now, the Destiny Taken King stuff, that's just DLC. That's just expansion, uh, expansion stuff. We didn't even throw that in there. So $560, that's, like, that's a good chunk of money to spend on the hobby. Uh, at Fallout 4, then the F is spelled with a 4, says, bruh. I spent like over two hundred dollars on Fallout Four and merch alone. So he got the he got the collector's oh, edition. Oh crap! With I the, that too. Yeah. So your your whole thing's going up too. Again, doesn't count like special edition boxes, all that. And Mr. T J Irvin says like seven hundred, give or take a few. That's a lot of money. He's kind of a reckless dude with his money. He's not even like he's spending it. He's not even thinking about it. He's not even seven hundred. I don't care. This is me at the bank. I go in there. I throw money on the floor. I don't give a damn. So uh, yeah, gotta, let, us how, let us know how, how much you're going to spend. Just throw it out there. Hold Get on. that money out there. I got to stop you down right now. Uh huh. Christopher Cox, who's watching on YouTube, says, shout me out, please. We don't do shout outs in this show, okay? Especially not for you, Christopher Cox. Yeah. We don't shout out Christopher Cox. So don't <laughs> shout outs to Christopher Cox. No shout outs for anybody unless, unless you have something, uh, something interesting to say about That's it. Right. And then we're going to say Especially it. not that shout out we just gave you, Christopher Cox. Absolutely no more shout outs to Christopher Cox. What do we got next, Max? Um, we are going to play uh, a little game, which yeah. is called You Have a Serious Problem. Or, wait, no. No, we're not. That's we're coming up after that. First we do, of all, we have a, we're we have going a more to serious be, problem. Uh, we're going to be playing a game that's called I Am Bread, which hit PS4 this week, and it's about being bread. Which I love it because if, you, if, for, if you're talking to a relative who hasn't paid attention to games in a long time, and they're like, what are you playing there? And yep. you're like, I am bread. They're going to be like... Is John okay? <laughs> what happened? Is Where did we good? go wrong? Anyway, let's take a look. I'm Brian, this is Max, and this is the IGN Up at Noon Challenge. Today we're playing I Am Bread, and we have one mission. Get that bread real wet. We have not played this game yet before. That's right. But we found out you can play as a loaf of bread, or a slice of bread, or really just muck around in this house. Let's get some bread in the bathroom. That's a good way to get bread wet. So we have just a few minutes to get this bread as wet as possible. We want to get it real soaked. Which character should we play as? The baguette, the bagel. Is there some rye? I like, I like the, I like the bagel. I don't want this. I don't want that. What is that? that? Bread? That's gross. Get out of here. You want us to do the traditional bread or the bagel? Yeah, I mean you're a French boy, right, Julian Scoville? Shut up. Scoville? Shut up. Le Légion. All right, so I want you to pick the baguette. I want you to go into the bathroom, and I want you to get this big long baguette as wet as possible. Let's get the baguette wet. We're gonna be getting wet in here. You know what's weird? You and I, um, we are, uh, we both went, we, we went to public school, and then we went to college for a little, you went to college for a little bit, I went to college for the, the whole time. Uh, we're, uh, what happened? What did you do? It's some kind of message. I don't know what's happening. You broke the game. Whoa. What, what's happening? Are we in the bread? Oh, we're in the pantry. Oh. Okay, so the bread's already wet. It took two seconds. I think I Thanks for that. watching the Up and New Challenge. All right, enough. You, the bread got wet in two... How did I do that? How did you do that? We literally started with the bread wet. How does this game work? The bread is wet. Does the controller get the... Con no. Okay, well, the bread's dancing around in that seat. <laughs> Can you move it? Can you get the bread in the toilet? I'm trying to get the bread in the toilet. 
just making a noise. Whatever. Yeah, I gotta say, we've done a, we've done a few up and new challenges on this show now. Uh, this is by far the easiest one, Easy, easiest thing in the world. You can you can try the challenge at home, literally any time. Just start I am bread, go into the bathroom, hit any button you want, and uh, here you, you use the number keys, three and four. See what it says. Okay, here we go. There we go. Walk the other way. Walk towards that toilet. And let's make some toilet bad bread. Some toilet dough. Almost dropped the bread in the toilet trash. Oh, toothpaste. Gross. You know, there's been a big uh, war on bread in, in America recently. Yeah, because of the, the people don't like to have carbs anymore. That's right. People don't like to have fun. And some it's very odd because... said that cavemen never ate bread, and now it's, like, bad to have it. Yeah, you know why cavemen didn't make have bread? Because they didn't know how to make it. They would have eaten it if they could. They would have also watched Netflix and, and eaten, you know, gummy gummy worms and stuff. Look at that. How's it going? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, no, you don't. Can I get a little finger wag? Uh, uh, uh. This is pretty easy. Yeah, it's real it's easy. Really get easy into the get. toilet. How do we how do we scale walls? This is so weird. A group of adults actually got together to create this game. I wish that I could make games. And I was, I was going to say, you know, you and I, we both... We went to school. Wow! 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 Can you find that duck in the bathtub? Let's get that bread soaked down there. Get that toilet. Oh, you broke a bottle. Flip it around. You're floating. I'm going crazy. Toilet bread. Get the bread in the toilet. Oh, it's. Oh, that is the worst place in the entire house, by the way. That you know weird area behind your toilet that no one ever really like, fully, truly cleans. Like you're ever down there, and it's just like. If this is running in CryEngine, that'd be covered in all kinds of, like, tessellated hair and things. <laughs> wow. Well, that was a good shot of that wall bread. Thanks. No! <laughs> <laughs> How do we, uh... We're locked out of toilet jail. Come on, hold on, give it a good grip. Yeah! There we go, there we go. Come on, come on. Get in the toilet, baby. Pull it on him. Pull that bread in the toilet. Pull the bread in. Pull it in. No, 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 no! Damn it. This game is great. Broke a bottle of... Is that gin? <laughs> kind of. Well, when Grandpappy takes a big dunk, what he likes to do is bring two or three sailors bottle of rum and dum gin inside of the toilet town with me. What's back? What is that back there? Is you break a? Is that a broken bottle? Yeah, it's a, I broke a bottle. It so gets we, okay. You're so you're happened. soaking up all the floor pee right now. Woo! Look at you helicoptering Woo! around. Look at that swinging that bread dunk. All right, so. Oh, you, you broke you 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 broke Grandpappy's gin gin flask. All right, now pull us, pull us up into the, into the. Oh, that's a weird angle. That is, this is a like a first-person puke game right now. Ah <laughs> oh, man, I'm getting vertigo watching this. I'm sorry if you're watching this at home and you're hungry for a nice bread lunch. You want to play uh, the, the real version of this? This is take actually a, take a piece of bread and go in the bathroom all on your own. This happens a lot in in households though. Oh. Is that, uh, wow, look, we can see the the world outside, and it's real sad out there. <laughs> what does the world of Iron Bread look like? Max, I'm gonna throw up. I swear, it's I'm gonna throw. We're playing a game about food near the toilet. Yeah, luckily we're close to the toilet because I'm gonna yak all over this. Let's play. All right, pull pull us all up. Pull us into the toilet. Get in that toilet bowl. Come on, couple more flips. There we go. There we go. I love how Albino Albert is now. Brian Albert is playing Dota 2 right now while we're trying to dig into a toilet Damn with it, bread. Brian, we're you know what? To play serious games over here. Yeah, we'll see you at the international next year, uh, Dota guys, because we're we're working on a real new game right now. And it's called Helicopter Donk and the Toilet <laughs> Adventures. <laughs> All right. All right. Pull, we, it, pull think, us into this toilet. I think we won. Did we win? No, get in the toilet. Ah. Is that dandruff shampoo, do you think? Yeah. Yeah, that goes with the rest of this guy's life, which is just a cartoon disaster. Who eats jam in the tub? The same guy that brings bread into the bathroom. <laughs> I wonder what those books say over there. Yeah. Can you go, go into the bathtub and fight the rubber ducky down there? He's a, that's a mini boss. Bring us in. Come on. There we go. Stale. There we go. Yes. Yeah, it's also covered in pubs. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm so happy watching this bread. <laughs> flipping around. Having a cool time. This is like um, this is like if Toy Story was about baked goods, <laughs> but all the this baked goods. This is like if, if employees had... at Pixar were baked good. Here, just slide on in. Let go. Oh, look. This is a good flip. Great dismount. Flipping it? That would be really creepy if it just did that. The noise is the worst. 
Oh, this is so nasty. I can't watch this anymore. Oh! oh! Rolling, <laughs> rolling, 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 rolling. With an actual roll. This is uh, that this looks like a scene from The Exorcist. Folks, if you don't let your landlord take care of that black this mold, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna grow a whole loaf. That's right. It's gonna start coming in your house, smashing your bottles, whacking around. It's gonna ruin your jam jar and piss off your ducks. It's gonna climb up the wall real bad and just get up there. Come on. It's not safe to have glass bottles near the near the tub. I really loaf this game. Ah, oh. you're wrong. I know you were kidding, but it's. All right, you're not getting in the toilet anytime soon. I win. We did it. Well, guys, that was the up and noon water challenge with a piece of bread. We got real soggy real early, and then we broke Grandpapa's gin, almost went in that toilet bowl, and fought a real baby duck. I'm Brian. This is Max, and that was the up at noon challenge. We're so stupid, and now you are too. Are you watching at home? Are you playing from home? Did you throw a whole loaf of bread into your... Is that the raccoon? Get, get him out of here. Get, at, get, get, get it out of there. Why? We have an actual uh, animal handler on the show today. His name's uh, Sean Sullivan. He's one of the producers for the show. You want to come back here with your, uh, with your uh, electric shocking stick? There he is. That's a real man. That's his job at work today. He's married. He's got... You have, you have kids, right? I have a kid, yeah. He's a kid. A whole child. He's a kid. He has somebody he goes home to who says, Where were you, Dad? And he goes, I, Today I had a... Use a stick to move a balloon holding up a plastic raccoon off the set when two idiots were talking about video games. Yeah. This is real life. Yep. Uh, speaking of real life, um, I, I want to get very serious with you guys uh, quickly. I, uh, as I've documented before here on IGN and my own personal travels, I have an addiction problem. It's not drugs or alcohol or cigarettes or anything like that. It's actually plastic toys that Nintendo releases whenever they want to, yeah. however they want to, in small quantities. They're Amiibo. Yeah. They're all over the place. So, uh, there have been 56 released so far, yeah. I believe. I have all of them, even the variants. They make gold and silver ones. Uh, the other day, they gave us uh, some new news. Um, can we take a look? Yeah, we got some so release they, dates. We just went down the releases of games that are coming out this year. Here is all the Amiibos that are coming out uh, over I, the next few months. Can I tell Keep you, I, have, I already have a bunch of these because I imported them. Yep. Yeah. Cheater. So, uh, so stop. See that giant? There's a giant green... Uh, Yarn Yoshi now, he's uh, about this tall, he costs $40. They're basically just saying that anything could be an amiibo. Basically, anything, it could be a card, they, it could be a toy. What if they re released uh, a 3DS that was an amiibo? <laughs> so you just put your 3DS on top you of You put it on top of another thing? So um, this, is, this is how this goes. When you collect things, you are constantly sort of moving the goalposts around and reinventing the logic in which you can continue to justify your addiction. Now, in uh, the case of Amiibo, I started going, I'm going to get the entire Smash Brothers set. And then Sakurai started adding more characters to Smash Brothers, meaning that I had to keep buying more Amiibo. Uh, then they came out with a Mario Party line that had variants like the gold and silver ones. I had to get those. Then they put out with three Yarn Yoshis that were cute and adorable in different colors. That's, I had to get those. That's when I started worrying. Like, see, I'm not, I'm not into Amiibo. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they're, I think they're all right. They're cool, whatever. Uh, but I've, I'm a big action figure collecting fan. And yeah. The thing with that is, there's no bottom to it. There's no, there's no end to it. If you look at uh, like Steve Sansweet, who's basically the, the guy who literally wrote the book on Star Wars collecting. Uh, he's got everything. He's got absolutely everything. And there's like, is there a difference between like international versions of Amiibo? Like, uh, so just packaging wise. Just packaging. But they're uni that's, they're universal. Yeah, uh, that's en wise. enough for some people to go to it. But like, you know, when you get really you know kind of granular with action figures, yep. it'll be like every little tiny bit. It's worrisome because I think that video games kind of beat a completionist mindset into fans. Yeah. And we've seen this with people who are paying like thousands of dollars for defective, not defective, but like irregular amiibo, like the like the Samus with the two the two cannons. Yeah, there's also so the Animal Crossing villager guy. There's a version of him they re-released where his hair is up higher on his head, and people are like, "Gotta yep. get that one too." Yeah, and that's not like I mean, one of them is going to be worth more than the other, just kind of because that's how that works. But I mean, it's you're, you're totally right. This is from the company that pioneered the phrase, you know, helped the pioneer the phrase. Got to catch them all. Yes, with Pokemon. Yeah, it's, so, it's scary. So I'm yeah. watching this now, and I'm going, when do I stop? Because I and I uh, I have I have a shelf at home where I put these on, and it's it's getting heavy. Like it's really it's getting some weight on there. And like I don't live in a big a big apartment. You know, I live in a one bedroom apartment, and in the corner of it is my desk. I have a little uh, in, in my bedroom where I live with my wife, uh, and there's 56 cartoon character statuettes. Uh, that's gonna hit 60 or 70 or 80 or 90. We're and not even. That's it's, we're not even through it. We're yeah, not even past Thanksgiving let's, let's keep, here. Let's, let's keep take looking. a look. 
Keeps going. Right so here. The, now here we go. This is where I start drawing the line. The Animal Crossing characters. When I can only name a few of these dudes, like this, uh, like the alpacas and whoever that weird messed up badger dude on the end is, or that girl with the with the blue thing, uh, or this dog that looks like uh, a snitch. I start worrying about this stuff. Okay, Tom Nook, I love you to death. I've been paying you money for years, but and these things are adorable. I totally want to open this door and, and never close it, right? Because there's hundreds of Animal Crossing characters. Yeah, I like Why animals. Why don't I just keep doing that? So here's the thing. If you are addicted to Amiibo like I am, uh, draw a line somewhere. I'm finishing with Smash Brothers. I might get, okay, hold on. We have some news. Uh, a Shovel Knight Amiibo was just announced. Uh, it was outed by a retailer. Um, this is how he's it happens. He's not even in Smash Brothers. He he, we don't going. even know how he's going to work with the game. It what says if they it's, add him to Smash it's Brothers. It's going to work with upcoming. Now, Shovel Knight's a game that sold 700,000 copies. This is not a. This is now they are making amiibo out of everything. This is dangerous. We got to be careful out here. This is very careful. Remember that addiction is a slippery slope. Uh, you could end up buying hundreds of these things. So work with me here. Help me figure out a way to step away from this. Do I need to start addicting uh, myself to other things? Do I need to hang out with Max more often? Do I need to stop, start buying new things entirely? Uh, we, we went on Twitter and we asked you uh, what you're addicted co to collecting right now because it's, it's more than just Amiibo. Um, uh, for example, every time I think I have it bad, AKA Dazed says, porn. Weird thing to collect. You can't really collect it. There's well, kind of, it's sort of, there. there it's a lot of it out there. That's the thing. I don't think you'd ever be able to catch them all on that. Yeah. Um, Pyrondi Soto says Nendoroids must collect Oof. everything. Those things are See, awesome. See, that's buddy. rough. Like I've kind of I've kind of backed off from action figure collecting. Yeah. Like, but the thing is that the really good action figures right now are coming out of Japan. Like yeah. they've always kind of had the best ones going on, but they've really just you got the like the fig arts, you've got the um, you know the Kotobukiya ones, you've got the, the Nendroid. They're like 50, 60 bucks a pop, yeah. which is like. Used to be like you go down to Suncoast and buy a McFarlane toy for ten bucks, and now it's like mm, I'm gonna have to go on Hobby Link Japan and get something that's not gonna show up for but you can, eighteen you can months. Swap out their faces. It's and their so hands cool. And their poses. It's you got really those awesome. little little tiny Metal Gear guys. You can move their eyeballs around. That's crazy. And Max, finally, at Dash Stampede says comics. It's an addiction. I know you can speak. Yeah. To that. So I actually I. I'm trying to trying to follow you and, and collect something, but have like a limit to it, and just right. be like, I told myself, I'm gonna get every single Uncanny X Men that came out in the 1980s, in the decade of the 80s, and I have a lot of that already. Like I have like a pretty pretty good collection of it. Problem is not the early parts, and when you get to the early parts of it, when it's like introducing characters, like I guess Kitty Pryde, she was towards the end of the 70s. Well, yep. It's showing up new characters, and it's like, oh, it's the first appearance of Rogue, and I'm like, oh, that comic is really expensive, and you know. It's, it's tricky. Uh, it's, William it's, uh, Thomas at, at Bramblefoot says, Shut up, Brian. You will buy them all. Don't lie to yourself. You're going to buy a lot, a lot of Amiibo. He's right. He's right. This is a, t this is a very, very scary thing. <sighs> um, Alden says, I don't even have a Wii U, but I want that 8-bit Mario. So that's the other thing. There's an 8-bit Mario with uh, blue pants that you can only get right now in America by buying a $300 Wii U bundle. You know how you get out of that? You stop. <laughs> you, uh, you, you buy the, the Wii U for a child, and then you... And you steal a toy. You steal a toy. You're like, oh, you don't want that. I'll, I'll trade you the. I'll trade you the other, the other one for that. Like stealing amiibo from a baby. Kids, uh, kids like probably bl blue colored things more than like brown, like sepia tone stuff. Fi finally, Joshua Nedich, that's at Chester Chivo, says, "Do you open your amiibo? If if so, do you keep the packaging? I do open them. I do not keep the packaging. Uh, free the amiibo. Free the toys. I'm not a big fan of, of keeping toys yeah. in the packages. I think that's like you're suffocating them. Okay. You know? I've seen Toy Story. Let's move on. Um, there is a new Dead or Alive." Extreme Volleyball, or whatever they're calling it. The new one is called Dead or Alive Extreme 3, 3 Venus, I think. Look at those. I don't See even that? know what's one. Stop it. That Stop that. Hand? It's not real. It's not, it's not really. Anyway, so we're going to try to have a, a mature discussion about this. Uh, they kind of... It started off as a as a as a volleyball game, and everyone's like, "This isn't really this isn't really just about volleyball. It's mostly about ladies in bikinis." Hmm. Yeah. And now they're just sort of like, "Yeah, it's Dead or Alive Extreme Venus." That's like what it's called, and it's like it's full of fun activities and lots of stuff we can do. Uh, here's a screenshot from the new one. Graphics are incredible, except for that hair, which looks like I made it in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually what they're showing off. That's, I mean, she's sort of playing volleyball, sort no, of a dramatic def pose. She's definitely playing volleyball. This got me thinking, though, is that like let's let's ignore the sexualization here and just look Pretty at some hard of, to do. <laughs> and some of the poses that they're doing. Okay. And are these really good volleyball poses? I don't know if they are. Okay, so here, here we let's have... start out here. That's not for volleyball. That's a that's a beach tube. You can go river rafting in that, but that's like if you showed up to a volleyball game and you're like. All right, guys, I'm here. Are we playing volleyball? They'd all be like, yeah, have you ever seen anybody playing volleyball? Because you don't use one of those. Go in the pool. It and you'd looks be like, like, all right, it, fine. It looks like she made her entire bikini out of the... We're not talking uh, about that part. Slingshots. We're not talking about the bikinis. Why not? 
No, we're talking about the po we're talking about the poses. Okay, I'm talking about the poses. I I think that that's a terrible uh, clothes to wear for volleyball. Uh, well, that's that. If you have a problem with that, I have bad news because it's not going to get any better. Okay. Next up, we've got this one. Uh, if you did that, if you're playing a volleyball, like she's losing at volleyball. I don't know what's happening, kind of over here. You know, uh -huh. I don't know, or I guess over here because of cameras. But she's sort of like. It's like the dramatic thing where she's like, oh, like, oh, I'm losing at volleyball. Or she's lost her contact lens. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Her volleyball hit her in the head and she lost the contact she's, lens. The game's kind of over. That's on a hiatus because she's got to go outside and like rinse that off, whatever. Anyway. Maybe she, that's a way, you this, know, she psychs out a I like this. Like I like this lady in the foreground. Uh, uh -huh. Everyone else in the background is, is playing, they're playing some volleyball. And she's looking the other direction. She's not even paying attention. She has volleyball. She's this, nursing an injury, this Max. Looks she like, has this looks like me in PE class. She has this looks like me in high school PE. When she everyone has else is volleyball like, we're playing elbow. volleyball. And, she, and she's like, huh, what are those deer are doing? Oh, whoa, there's, 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 is that a cop car? You know, no, because you, you in high school PE didn't bring gym clothes. You were in your Danzig shirt. It Fair was enough. Like 4XL Fair enough. with blue hair. This would be a weird pose no matter, look at how sad she is. Like, uh, no matter what you're wearing or wh who you are, if you sat like in that exact pose, if you recreated that and looked forward, it's like, if somebody was trying to remember how to do a certain form of yoga. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, this is probably the best yet. Because is she knocked out cold? This was looks she like me. Volleyball? This, if, aside from the fact that this is a, a half-naked, uh, computer-generated woman with, with blue hair in a bikini, this and looks like me when I'm waking up in the morning and I don't want to go to, to work. And I'm just like, no, I don't want to get out of bed. Do you sleep in your cloud shoes like that? I why do. Is she, she's wearing I have, safety I have glasses. night slippers. Uh, those, that's not good sand attire. I mean, none of this is, but like, why even wear, like, go barefoot. Yeah. You know? Go yep. barefoot. Yeah, you're not wearing anything else. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, this is volleyball uh, that's training. A that's a, I think that is yoga. That's the, uh, that's the snake, I think. Yeah. Is it called a snake? The cobra? Were cobra? You, I forget. She's digging her feet into the sand real deep there. Oh, no, that's she's actually really... Oh, no, yeah. It's sort of These like if someone's like, pushers. hey, we're going to go inside. It's, it's getting, it's getting uh, cloudy. We should go inside. And she's like, oh, fine. You know. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Like, okay. Okay, so if you're... I get the idea that maybe you're worried about UV rays. You don't want to get too much sun. Uh, there's no way that this hooded sweatshirt and bikini combo is working for anybody. Also, are there sharks? Um, I, yeah, probably. I think there's sharks. Probably That's sharks. what she's hiding from. She's trying to blend into the sky so the sharks don't see her. Sharks so can't tell. Low budget active camo. That's yeah, I don't right. know. It's just like, hey, you're playing volleyball. No, nah, man, I'm sad. I don't feel like it. I don't want to play volleyball right now. All right, she's a kitty. Don't don't wear that to the beach. You look like a look like the town fool. Dokes. <laughs> this one I like is it's like if they were like. Let's go to the beach and do some summer reading. Ah, oh, we forgot our books. We forgot our darn books <laughs> and our towels. How many people lose their contact lenses in this game? What? Finally, this one is from the newest one. I love this because they put out a bunch of screenshots for the new DOA. Uh -huh. And like, let's be realistic. People kind of expect to see the, the bikini ladies in these, in these screenshots. Some environmental artist was like, hey now, we should show off the new palm tree tech we're doing. The sand looks great in the new game. He's a lot a, of people are going to want to see the palm trees and the sand. He's the renegade guy working on the staff who's just kind of like, you know, what if this wasn't about boobs? What if this was about volleyball? And they're like, you get out of here! They're, they're like, they're like, all right, sh sure, Kevin. Let's, let's humor Kevin. He's had a <laughs> long week making those palm trees. Last week we asked you guys to Photoshop Sonic the Hedgehog into some games that he shouldn't be in. Uh, so that's that's um, what we're going to be doing. That's We've got right, these images the we did. did. Uh, Andrew Gonzalez sent us this one, Bugman83 on Twitter. It's the Sonic edition of World of War. I like that. I would play the hell out of the game. It looks awesome. Then we got Son of Spurticus in Assassin's Creed. All right, yeah, he's just, oh, no, Shadow's in there. Shadow's there. He's a Templar. That's no good at all. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Game Nugs got him in, uh... This is a little Shaq Fu action wow. we got here. Sonic he's Fu huge. I, if they had DLC in 1994, Sonic would have totally been... <laughs> uh, yeah, he would have been exclusive DLC. That's right. Here's the last of... Uh, 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 oh, uh, man, oh, John whoa. Cousins. Yeah. This dude's getting eaten here. Reel it in. Look at, I like that, the cartoon hand. Looks very And good. then finally, Kyle probably put the... Toilet Sonic rats! Toilet rats are all around us. That's an awful, terrifying, awful thing. Uh, today is National Burger Day. That's a true thing. That's an actual real thing. I feel like that happens. Like, it was hot dog day a few weeks ago. It That's was dog day yesterday. Yesterday was National Cherry Popsicle Day, National Regular Dog no. Day, and National Women's time? Equality Day, which sort of feels like maybe the prioritization should have happened. In any case, today's National Hamburger Day, and luckily, you did a bad thing with a hamburger. Why That's right. You, uh... Yesterday, uh, Burger King issued a challenge to McDonald's uh, for world peace. It was a good challenge. And they wanted to combine their burgers. Um, it didn't go so well, so uh, I fixed it for them. Let's take a look.
Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brian Altano from IGN and Up at Noon Live. Now, in an effort to initiate world peace today, uh, the Burger King Corporation reached out to their good friends and moral enemies over at McDonald's to create something called the McWhopper. So they reached out and they said, let's do this. And McDonald's actually said, that's a cool idea. Uh, but let's figure something else out. So uh, if they're not gonna make this themselves, we figured we'd make it ourselves. Now I did a little bit of research. Uh, I went with the Whopper with cheese. This is a heavy sandwich. This is about 730 calories. Now over here, we've got the Big Mac. Combined, these two things are just under 1300 calories. I don't know how I'm supposed to eat this. I honestly don't. I, I probably have to push it. I'm gonna have to squish it down a little bit. So let's, let's give it, oh man, that is not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. So here we go, the first ever bite of a Mick Whopper sandwich. That is delicious. <laughs> this should not be done. This should never be done. But that is a really good sandwich. Uh, but all together, really gross looking sandwich. Just straight up horrifying, but pretty tasty. So uh, go out there, do the right thing, and um, make this burger. What a great idea. That is amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, you want a bite? Yeah, I survived that. That was a hard afternoon for me. Yeah, uh, I had to go in a conference room with you after that. Ed Morsan says he'd like to combine the McRib and the Arch Deluxe. I know it'll mean going back in time, but I have a device. You're wasting it. You need to bring that time machine and stop bad things from happening. No, I kind of like the idea of somebody who's got a time machine, but he's like, yo, I, I, well, I want to get an Arch Deluxe. And you're like, <laughs> we could kill Hitler. And you're like, yeah, but I want to get an Arch Deluxe. Well, no. We got all the time in the world. I got a time machine. Why not? That's right. Max, we got to look at some new Star Wars helmets yeah, this Yeah, so um, Rogue One star Donnie Yen uh, tweeted out or put on Instagram these new helmets. We haven't seen a whole lot from Rogue One. Let's mm -hmm. take a look here. Uh, in the middle, we've got the good old, good old Stormy, and then over here we've got a mysterious one that's like a kind of looks like something out of uh, Rebel. Uh, was it yeah. um, the uh, uh, Commando? What am I saying? You know the one? Yeah, Clone, Clone Commandos. Halo of Star Wars. Um, and then of course there's this one over here, which I like a lot. I like yeah, that it's beige, that awesome. super '70s looking, which fits really well between, uh, you know, between the. It kind of reminds me of uh, the, Le the, the Leia hat that she wore in Jabba's palace. Uh, I, keep in mind too, this photo was pulled off Instagram within seconds. Yeah. Like, so they, they got, got deleted. He real got fast. scolded. Oh yeah. Uh, but it got me thinking. You know, there's a lot of helmets in Star Wars. What about hats? There's some weird hats in Star Wars too. Yes, there are. So and a lot of them, uh, yeah, they suck. <laughs> the hats in Star Wars they're are. Gonna be blunt. Are, they're, I think that's a cool one. They're bogus. That's a hood. And a helmet. I guess you're right. Yeah, so I want to go over Tauntaun some, uh, some sucky Star Wars hats. All right, let's Number take a 10, look. Log Ray, Ewok Medicine Man, your hat is part of a dead bird. <laughs> also, somebody got this autographed by the guy who played him. You can't see it, but the guy autographed it and then wrote in parentheses below that Log Ray. I don't know if Pat Blue signed it, but he's chilling there. I don't even know Log Ray's little, name. Little These bears. are cannibals. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of guys you're not going to know. He's just got like a, he's, it's just messed up to have a dead bird on your head. It's, yep. it's awful. Real gross. Boss Nass. Yeah, it's just Why the, are you gonna show this? I don't even want to think about this guy. Hey, let me put a nice thought in your head. That he looks like me? No, no, no. Yeah, well, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> um, what, if, what if Boss Nass was a practical effect? That would have been great. That would have been really cool, okay. but it's so nice, but he wasn't. So anyway, his hat sucks. Moving on. Nyan Nyan. That's Nyan. his head. That's not his head. His sort head of. happens to look like his hat. It looks like he's wearing three hats over a regular hat. You know how weird it looks when somebody wears like a flesh-colored shirt or like a like a tan that's too close to it and you're like, whoa, are you topless? No, you're wearing a uh, weird you shirt. You know how weird it looks when it looks like a guy's wearing someone else's skin? Because right. that's Nien Num's well, entire operation. Well, he's not making any better by wearing this weird monk's cap. So Nien Nyan, I love you, blah, 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 but your <laughs> hat sucks. Next up, Dengar, one of my favorite uh. Star Wars characters, but his hat is the worst. The he looks like mummy. a mummy with a toothache who's like... <laughs> What He's, did you do? Like, what did you do? I know what he did. I know his backstory. I know his whole expanded universe thing. Yeah. But he looks like he showed up real late, and they didn't have time to get him in costume. They're like, they're already filming. Just waddle out there and look disgruntled. <laughs> Watto. We talk about Watto a lot. The that's one, a flying saucer that landed on his head. It's not that's a hat. Not what that is. The the big change that happened to him in episode two is that he grew a little, really, really gross beard. Yeah. And he got this. Dumb lopsided and he, space fedora. And he's dead to you. It's terrible. I like, have to wear a uh, thing. Oh, oh, you want to buy one? Oh, it's a chance cube, but don't work on me. I play tabletop down at the Crimson Dragon. He's, uh, uh, he's, uh, not, not all toy daddians. Right. Anyway. Uh, Lobot, get off your Bluetooth. That's not a hat. It's, a, it's close enough. No, there's a Beats okay, by Dre. It's, it's an imp. <laughs> all right, fair enough. 
I like I like Lobot. I think he's a really we- he's a wonderfully weird character. He's he's a, one of the few like clear cyborgs in Star Wars. Yeah. And he's it looks it looks dumb. It looks like uh it looks like when guys are like, like what if he's just balding under there and he's got like a like a Picard thing going on? He's, he's got balding that, like, everywhere. Why would he hide that one part? He just doesn't want to shave it, so he just hides it. Anyway, all of the Nimoidians. Oh, these guys Newt, super racist. Newt by Gunray, the way. <laughs> Rune Haiko, Lot Dodd. They all have the dumbest hats. They're just the worst. They look like weird messed up lamps or furniture or something. Yeah, they're like, not a fan of those hats. Like, they're eighties popes. All right, then we've got. This is kind of a deep cut. Not Luiski Papanoidia. Papanoidia. Papanoidia? That's George That's, Lucas? That is George Lucas. That is his weird cameo character. He and his daughter both appeared in Revenge of the Sith. I kind of took some liberties here. This is my new wallpaper, by the way. He's all peeking out. He looks like some... Looks like a like a kind of dance R&B singer in, like, 1989. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not a fan of that hat, though. It sucks. Not as bad <laughs> as this one, though. Look at these Imperial dignitaries. You see these guys in the background, background of, um, of Return of the Jedi, and they're all hanging yeah. out with Palpatine. Oh, the Palpatine's like... Oh, you guys have to go. Vader's here. He's got this. Uh, I'm sorry. Like I know we, we're gonna hang out and just and, and kick it in our dumb hats and weird old robes, but you guys gotta bounce. And they're all just like the one on the far left looks like he's like the iPhone 4s, and everyone else is on the 6 plus. Also, like, they didn't give him the new hat. <laughs> that hat is so. I can understand why they took that hat out of the film. Anyway, yep. <laughs> finally, the number one worst hat in Star Wars. Kind of a technicality here because it isn't really in Star Wars because they deleted the scene. It's Luke's bucket hat. It sucks. Yeah, fisherman dad over here. He looks like he's, it's like, oh, Luke Skywalker, more like Luke concert goer. Like, what are you going to go see fish in that? Are you, are you the lead singer of Weedus? You guys remember Weedus? Anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> that hat sucks. I'm just, I'm sorry, like, I like Luke's design, but this, that, that bucket hat thing that was totally going on in, like, 1997. But Max, the most exciting thing about Shut the new Star down. Wars movies is that there's going to be tons of new terrible hats I'm in those I'm so films. excited I'm about really it. really excited for that. Ruining those hats. That's right. Uh, anyway, um, one thing I want to talk about, we got some great news. Real big news. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan talked a little bit about Avatar 2. He said that he's, uh, he realized there was some, it was kind of a, a mixed reaction to the first Avatar. And I was Why like, is that me, there? M. Night Shyamalan. I'm pretty sure everybody loved the first Avatar. That's why it's the most, the biggest money-making movie ever. You, no, you're, that's the wrong Avatar. M. Night Shyamalan did Avatar The Last Airbender. You're talking about James Cameron's Avatar. That is the loosest connection. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, you gotta okay, stop putting right, this right, damn sorry, thing I, in the show. Well, it's a great excuse to talk about what we want to no, see it's Avatar not. 2. It's a great chance to talk about it. I think that Avatar 2 is going to be fantastic. You know what? It's funny that you can make that connection because the airbenders, they've got the, the four elements. The, the first the first Avatar film had a heavy hey Max. on just on on the land. Hey Max, Avatar's a very, very creative movie. I remember you told me a story when you were very creative in a metal shop and you accidentally set your pants on fire. Do you remember that? Back this was in high school, right? And you already had you had a lot of social anxiety issues. I was going to talk about that. How maybe but the you were working the in a metal Avatar shop would have <laughs> elements like your fire. Your pants on fire and you had to leave and everyone was laughing at you. The whole classroom of people was laughing at you. Yeah, it was, that embarrassing I was trying tale? to. I was trying yeah, to well, that's what you get. That's what you get. Can you I, don't bring this up. I, was trying to, I, was trying I don't want to see that blue picture of me. I don't have eyes like that. I don't have a star system on my damn face. I don't want to see this Photoshop. I don't even want you, I want you to delete that font from your computer. I had to borrow the metal shop Not about cargo this anymore. shorts. You had an extra pair of pants. I had to wear them, but they were too small for me. Uh, You're burned, the worst. Burned a hole in my pants. Good. I hope everyone makes fun of your pants. Yeah. Suck it, Avatar. This concludes Avatar. We'll be back next week for great news about what Jake Sully's up no, to on the we planet won't. Pandora. No! I'll see you. All right, what do we got going on? Uh, PAX is this weekend. We're actually leaving the office like right after this. Did yeah, you, we're, we're like, bring, we're getting on a plane. Did you, did you bring your suitcase? Yeah, I did. Did you? Okay, right, you yeah, I brought my suitcase. We got a suitcase is full of things to wear. We're going to go to PAX. That's right. You can, uh, uh, we, we tweeted out where you can find us. We're doing meet and greets. We're doing live shows, all kind of stuff. You can, you can come see us in the street. Penny Arcade Expo up in Seattle, of course. I've been to this. I think it's my fifth one. Yeah. I've been to a bunch of them. I've been to a bunch of different weird video game conventions in general. Uh, I think I kind of want to just, just share some just... St- you know, strange occurrences. I guess I'm, I'm trying to think if they're really if they're really that strange. I think the worst the worst moment I had, uh, I had to take a red eye to PAX East, and it was my first time going to PAX East. One of my one of the kind of most recent times I've been back to the East Coast during right. the winter time. PAX East is rough because it's Boston. It's in the middle of like February, or whatever. It's four degrees out. Yeah, I had to get on a red eye, so I was like, "Yo, I'll handle this just fine." Get on the plane. Uh, did that thing where I kind of started feeling a little bit sick when I got off the plane. Step out into the New England winter, and then suddenly I'm just like, oh, I think I'm dying. Uh, I think it was the beginning of, this, of the first day of the show actually being open. Uh, my first appointment was to go check out Aliens Colonial Marines. And at that point, <laughs> I was full-blown feverish. And they put us in this like little room, and Randy Pitchford came out and was like, 
Fans of the Aliens franchise are going to be <laughs> thrilled to learn. We have been working closely with 20th Century Fox to bring James Cameron's universe to life. And then he showed us this, this footage, which has since been sort of like... That's, that's maybe that's not the, the real thing that we saw in the game. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I walked out of there and I was trying to do uh, that a, game got a, a, lot a stand up to be like, yeah, I was, I was uh, aliens, colonial marines. And I'm like sweating. I'm sweating bullets on camera and I'm like dizzy and I start losing my voice halfway through it. Jack? And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, well, at least I managed to get that piece up and I, I got to cover this great game that's going to be awesome. Blah! Yeah, that wasn't a fun time. That's right. Man, so, that was a great show. Thank you. Thank we did you. It. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks um, for watching. Use the hashtag Up at Noon Live uh, or Up at Noon, whatever it is. Yeah, um, IGN is actually on. Uh, it's on on Snapchat now. If you're uh, hip with the lingo, yep. hop on Snapchat. Um, if you just go on the the whole Discover thing, if you swipe to the left, you go to the, that direction, and then you. Uh, you pull up, uh, you pull up uh, IGN on there. It's like a fun little mini magazine. That's right. Uh, right after this, we are going to be, we're not going to be doing anything. We're going to be getting on an airplane. But uh, some fine folks are going to be playing Mario Maker, which is really, really cool. It's I, so fun. You're, you're like a crazy Mario fanboy. Yeah. I'm kind of lukewarm about that, but I love it. I, I adore it. Um, on that note, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be back next week. I'm bring it in. Bring in my little raccoon baby. Come on now. You, you got your stick all Damn it, so you, you got it all job. tangled up. Thanks for watching Up at yep. Noon. Let's watch some animal movies. Goodbye. I like the cantaloupe. It's like cut by a little distance. It's still moving. Look at that guy go. There's a wet, wet body wet. This is from my personal collection. Yeah, man.